Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorce mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. Is your ex trash-talking you to your kid, or have you overheard trash-talking happening in your home? Today we're going to be talking about what is the deal with trash-talking or bad-mouthing the other parent, what the court thinks about it, and what you can do about it. Hello, Mum. Hello, Laura. (laughs) It's a big topic. I know. And we get asked a lot, what am I going to do? I'm overhearing. My child comes home from school after spending the weekend at Mum's, and they said, Mum said you don't pay enough child support. Mm. Or they come home from dad's and they say, dad said you cheated on him. Mm. So there's a lot of emotions, I guess, when it comes to separating, obviously. And it is hard to, you know, turn all that off if you're hurting or if Mm. it's what you constantly talk about. Uh, But you don't want to be talking about it with your kid. No. And it's also probably what you're constantly thinking about because you you think a separation means your car may change, your home may change, the kid's school may change, and suddenly you're a, a single parent, you know, and I like that's a lot to think about. And it, I, it's not surprising that it takes up a lot of brain space mm-hmm. uh, for both of you. But sometimes it seems like the core expectation of you is a bit unrealistic. They don't want the kids ever to hear anything like that from either parent. And they don't want to hear the parent talking to the neighbour or their mother or their anyone about that because the kids love both of you, hopefully, and they are half of you and half of them. So that if you tell your child that her mother is rubbish, her mother's stole money, her mother is lazy or should get a job, the child experiences that as an attack on their fundamental selves, Mm. right? And Mm. similarly the other way. So it's hard in the heat of the moment, but you've really, really, really got to focus on not causing damage to the kids. Mm. That's going to require a very good poker face. You're probably going to be biting your tongue a lot. Well, if they um, come back and they're saying, mummy said this, blah, 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 and or daddy said this, blah, 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 and you're feeling that emotion of, oh, I can't mm. believe he'd say that, and you want to immediately say, but you that's know, not true. that's not true. You shouldn't. It's hard. Yeah. Oh, I, I understand it entirely. Yeah. Um, I understand it even when you were little, came back and said how someone had made homemade ice cream and, and you'd never had that before. And I was so outraged because I made it all the time. Uh, and uh, But I couldn't really say anything. Yeah. And I, so I feel your pain, dears. Mm. But the kids are finding it hard enough. Mm. So just don't. Well, we've heard that, that there's a guilt associated with the children, not just the personal attack of they're saying, oh, your mother's lazy. They're thinking, oh, well, I must be lazy because mum's my mum. But also the guilt associated with even just hearing that kind of trash talk and then going back into the other home yes. and then acting like everything's normal but knowing in the back of their head, oh, I was sitting there while everyone was talking bad and about you and I didn't stand up for you. defend you, yes. So the, there's that kind of the torn loyalty. They feel bad. They do. Guilty. They absolutely yeah. do. And, and, the, and if they do say something to you, they may know that you're going to get into their father. Mm-hmm. The father's going to be in trouble. So kids are actually carrying secrets. Swallowing stuff. They are. They, they're keeping Look, it. without a doubt. If someone, if you're listening to this today, you're dealing with someone yes. is doing trash talk about you to your kids and you're like, what the heck am I supposed to do about this? So I know for a fact, if you're listening to this, you're not the one who's doing it. That's right. So that's a good thing. Mm. So, and the fact that you care about enough, enough about your kids to listen to this episode, we know that you want to do the right thing yeah. and you're trying to figure out how to save your kids from this nastiness. So mum, can you just tell me, I know you said the court looks down on it, but what happens in a court if that sort of stuff's found out? What, what's the court's view on it and how does it affect your case? Well, the court's view is very, uh, they take a very dim view mm-hmm. of discussing these adult issues. That's your favourite phrase, just seeing a, dim a very dim view. Well, the judges, well, they hate it. <laughs> so they just narrow their eyes? Yeah, well, well, and they... Is that all not, that happens? They just no, don't like you? No, it, one of the barometers by which they assess if you can be or provide proper emotional support for the child or look after them psychologically, if you can't control yourself or they can't con- that your ex can't control himself enough to keep it to themselves and just be with the kids then 
that means they can't provide properly psychologically or emotionally for the children. And so if one of you is doing that and one of you is not, then the court will lean towards the parent who is not doing it. Right. But like you said, respond not responding mm. takes an absolute iron will. Mm. <laughs> and you want to cl- clear up the record. You want the children to hear your side. You want the children not to think you are this person that your ex-wife or husband or de facto partner is saying to them that you are. But I can tell you for absolute certain that if you do respond to those children about those things, they're going, their eyes will glaze over. They then won't know who to believe. And they are none the wiser because both of their parents are telling them a different story. They are terribly conflicted. And then they've realized that if they're younger, mm. kids think their parents are basically oh infallible. Mm. They don't they they never lie. They do everything perfect. And it's a it's a nasty shock to go, wait, this person who I have relied on to keep me alive and will continue just to realise on. one of them's lying. Yeah. Who am I supposed to believe? And look, I've heard a psychologist say that you say, Mummy and Daddy love you very much, or Mummy and Mummy or Daddy and Daddy love you very much. We're sorting things out. It's nothing for and you to worry about. And, we, and it's not for you to worry about. That's right. And as hard as that would be, if someone has just trash talked you, it would be so hard. But that you want the kids to know, okay, well, at least with mum, I don't have to listen to that stuff. Yeah. Because really, particularly teenagers, they don't care. Yeah. Oh. They, they're so interested in school and their friends and they don't want to sit there and have a long discussion about your relationship That's your in relation. the past. They That's don't right. care. No. And little kids and they don't want to Yeah. And little kids you don't want to disenchant them. Yeah. And even though you may nearly choke on the words saying that their other parent loves them very much, mm. that's what you need to put that's what you need to tell them. So if your ex, yeah. so you're saying the court has a dim view and it can affect this way. When does this come out in court? When does when does this kind of, or in mediation, when does this trash talking behaviour get shined a light on? Normally, the first time you hear about it is your client will tell you, mm-hmm. right? You might, the kid will report something. But the way that it gets dealt with by the court is that it comes up usually in the child impact reports or in the family report. Mm -hmm. So I urge you, if this is happening to your child and you have a family report coming up or a child impact report coming up, make sure you say that your child has reported that daddy says this or daddy's parents said that about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that goes to the front of their mind. They can then question the other parent about it yeah, and maybe in a gentle way get the kids' take on that as well. Mm -hmm. And that will give you your independent evidence. And that shines a light on it. It does. But until that time, it's really hard. You can write, have letters, you can write letters and say, such and such says you said this, but what you're doing is you're you're putting little Debbie in the in the firing line for when she's got to go back to that parent. The parent yeah. go, you told your mother mm-hmm. or you told your dad. Mm. And so got to, it's very... You've got to choose when you raise it, it. Absolutely. Otherwise they won't tell you anymore and then they're on their own. Yeah, well, or they get punished for telling you when yeah. they go to the other house. So that's the fine line. Anyone who's listening to this episode would know, would know about that. Yeah. So it comes out in the family report. In mediation, you have to tell them. in mediation, is there sometimes a child expert? expert? Yes. So sometimes there is. If you go through the court process, you'll sometimes get a registrar of the court. Uh, this is the, in Western Australia, it's their equivalent of the court, but Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia. Uh, you'll get a registrar of the court and a child court expert, mm-hmm. or is it a court child expert? Something like that. <laughs> and they <laughs> sit there as well. And their expertise is in the development of children Mm. and what is age appropriate for children and how a child of this particular age would generally respond. So they they don't really meet with your children. Mm. They're just an expert on kids. They just apparently are smart and know about children. So if it's raised in a mediation with a child expert, Mm. court-appointed child expert, would they be disappointed? Would they have something to say? They would have something to say in terms of writing the report. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But generally, remember, mediation is confidential. Okay. So they can only probably tick the box that both parties tried, actually. I don't think in a mediation context they'll report it to the court. But a child impact study would put put it in for the court. But if you don't raise it and he doesn't raise it or your ex wife doesn't raise it, 
and the kids don't raise it. It just goes into the ether. So you need to, you mention, need to it mention it and probably have a letter written, put it in your affidavit. So a that's letter written. Happening. So that gets us to that next step. What okay. can you do about it? So that's what will happen if it gets to court. The court mm. will have a dim view <laughs> and it may affect a little bit of which percentage sway and in who has the kid. Yeah. If there's other factors involved, it could weigh in. It could be the big thing. It could be the so thing that it's, tips the balance. As weird as it sounds, there's a reason that the symbol for the legal profession or the court Courts is a sc- is scales, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and it is something that would be weighed on your side in your favour and against the other person if they've been talking to the kids badly. Mm. And so, but there are a lot of factors. They all have to get put together and then the outcome. So that it could be decisive. Okay. But even forget the court aspect of it. You don't want your kids being screwed up by the separation because what right. they do in is, historically, kids just go, you know what, you two brought me into your separation, you've dragged it out, I've had a terrible childhood, I'm not I'm not spending time with either of you mm. or I'm going to stay away from you as much as I can. Yeah, which is sad. So when it's what you can do about it, mm. I'm talking about there's two, like what can you do about it legally, right, writing a letter, and we'll talk about writing a letter, but what can you do about it at home? Because we have had some people ask can I record the conversation? Mm. Can I screenshot the text? Can I so can I sit next to my child while they have the discussion and then tell them that it's inappropriate if that if I overhear it? Or c- can the discussions be supervised? So all of these ideas get thrown at us all the time. Mm. Um, so can you maybe <laughs> point out what can is probably a bad idea. So, so the miracle worker, you mean, yes. with all of those on, scenarios. And, and you help everyone. Let's help any, this situation. Any number of cases and any number of scenarios. So let me say it at the outset. Yes. That if you have a court order, you must follow the court order. Secondly, text messages between the father and or mother. I keep saying it. I, I'm sorry, fellows who are listening to us. I, it's just, I guess, my own experience. I keep saying the father. But text messages between the parent and the child. If the child's under even 18, I would think, you've got to weigh up if it's worth taking a screenshot of that message to save the child from further harm. Mm. It's it's the benefit you, you would get from doing that. Right. As for recording conversations, that's a very fraught topic. There are different states with different legislation. But by and large, if you're involved in a conversation with a person in Queensland, at least, it's not illegal to record that conversation. And But just, who knows what the laws are? And yeah. Are. Well, I mean, I think most police, for instance, have like recording, mm. permanent recording. But whether you have to tell them is probably the other yeah, thing. But if you go and record someone and then say you heard it on the divorce, we're not telling you to do that. No. Okay, no. check, your, check laws. your law first. Check, check your, your laws. Law. Another way of doing it is that you can put in your affidavit or in a letter to the other side, word for word, your recollection of what was said. And this is where I like to put it. If it's terrible, I will put that in bold in the centre of the letter of the white space So what around. kind of letter do you write? So, uh, dear such and such. Yeah. Re, uh, communications with Jethro, okay? Last night, I... While I wasn't in the room with Death Reaper when he was talking to you, I overheard you say this, da, 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 da. That is um, inappropriate and has caused our child distress. Please refrain from that. When you send that letter, very calm and clear and stating the facts, right, you're not putting death row in it because you actually overheard it. There might be a court order requiring you to give the child privacy, in which case you m- might be in, in trouble with the law with the court for listening and doing it. But if you accidentally heard it as you walk past, something like that, you put that in uh, and send that letter to them, there's your evidence. Now, they will either respond with, I never did, I don't do that sort of thing, or they might say, oh, he's old enough to know, I tell him everything. And that would be perfect to show the family Brilliant. court writer. Yes. Sad that complete, that's their attitude. Yeah, but a complete... It, it, they have a complete misunderstanding of the impact of their actions on the child. Mm, mm. So, but a you court to might... name it, or like if they really, it, they might go, "Oh my goodness, I hadn't realised that that was going to do that to him." And you might recommend that each of you goes to a parenting course, a pop course, pop course, parenting orders program. Um, and just get educated mm. about the impact on the kids. So a parenting orders program is where they educate you on the impact. They show you videos. You do worksheets mm. to talk about, you know, 
your child notices things like at handover, the child's noticing your behaviors. When you are talking about the other parent, the child notices what language you use. There's some videos that they can show you where the the kids talking about their experiences oh, when they grow up, um, you know. So it's it's actually if you if you care about your kids and you really love them, doing a pop course is is something I did one is something that will help you and your children. Yeah, doing a pop course does not mean you're the bad person. No. It means you're genuinely wanting to help your kids get through this without being damaged. And these pop courses are written by social workers, psychologists, and professionals who who are literally trying to help you yep. make sure your kids get through this okay. Are, they, are there any free ones, Laura? Yes, I think they're free. I think they're online. The Relationships well. Australia does them, Yeah, but there are a whole bunch that you can look up and have a look. You can do them online, you can do them remotely, or you can go and even sit in groups where you sit around in a circle and you share your stories mm. with other parents mm. and the social worker or the psychologist sits and helps you work through the issues that you've got at that time. That's great. And do you know the court will order it if they think it's necessary. Mm. But it's much better if you can proactively go and do it yourself without a court order. And then when you ask for an order that your ex attend a parenting orders program or something like that, you can say, and here's my certificate. I did it. I learned a lot. She would really benefit from this course. And the court may well order. that they, they have started, I've seen, sort of cynical looks from certain judges when the, both parties want the other to go to a pop course or whatever. Mm. And uh, and actually one judge said, well, I'm not going to order it. If they don't go and do a course like that, then I know which way I'll be looking when it comes to the trial and they can sit with that. So mm. it's a very good strategy for anyone who's got children's matters to go and do that course. It was introduced years ago and it's dramatically improved. The It was meant to help people follow the orders and not say, oh, well, these orders aren't working because of one little hiccup that mm. gets you over those bumps. But that's got to be probably 20 years now. Well, most people are doing them before they get the orders. Yeah. So, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. And that's what we want. Mm. Yeah, that's what you want. And look, so when it comes to this trash talking, mm. I hear this term adult matters uh. used in family court spaces yeah. and family therapists. And stuff. So what should you and should you not be talking to about your kids, with your yeah, kids? What, what are the things you can't talk about the, with your kids? You'll notice there's never a court order that says you can't talk about adult matters because that means you couldn't ever give them the birds and the bees talk <laughs> <laughs> um, or what to buy at the shops. Or, yes. So what the Don't court, talk about tax, that's yeah, an adult matter. Yes, that's right. You think about it. Yeah. Don't talk about makeup, that's an adult matter. Yeah. Yeah. So what the court really means, and people are just using shorthand, I think, I never use adult matters, but the court orders will say. You know you can find us on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. We're there waiting for you right now. If you want to get more out of the Divorce Course, all you have to do is go to the Divorce Course podcast at Facebook or TikTok or the Divorce Course on Instagram. There we share bite-sized pieces of information and bite-sized inspiration and motivation to help you through this difficult time. Come and join our community and let us know you've joined. We'd love to see you there. Something like that the neither parent uh, or each parent is restrained and an injunction granted restraining them from discussing this court case or any matters pertaining to this case. Okay. Um, in the, and anything before the court with with the children, and uh, they will use their best endeavours to remove the children from any uh, people who are discussing. Uh, the this court case and these matters. So you're not expected to sort of run in and say to your uncle, no, 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 don't stop. And you can't be ordered to stop your uncle doing it. Mm. All you can be ordered to do okay, is say, come on, Johnny, let's go outside. Let's go outside. I've, I've found yeah. a, a little frog under this branch or something. Yeah. So the adult matters. It's so just then, a furphy. It, but they're talking. So basically, don't talk about the case. That's it. You don't say I'm going to court it. today, yeah. or I just went and saw five lawyers. Yeah, we've heard someone say that to one of the kids. Yeah, uh, one of the members. So you, you, it's a delicate line. You can't spring it on them, Rose. Though no. you can't say, "Oh, yeah, oh, you're not going to school today. You're going to see the family report writer today." That's yes. like so. You're entitled to do a little bit of. Um, telling them what's happening. Mm. Be careful, though, in that context because one of the questions the family report writers will, or child impact statement people will ask is uh, to the kid, 
did mummy say anything to you about court today? What, what or this today? What did mummy say? Yeah, or do you, you know? know what's happening in court at yeah. the moment? And sometimes kids get primed to say, I want to live 50 50. Mm-hmm. Um, when they don't even know what, don't that, even means. Know what that means, <laughs> and they don't even know how to live that, yeah. what that will impact on. Or I've had kids in family reports who have had it who miraculously mirror their mother's or their father's application to the court and maybe splitting the kids, right? One kid, Mm. that's fair because kids have a really strong sense of fair Mm. from preschool. They cut an apple, half each, that's fair. Mm. Uh, So mummy and daddy, half each. And then when you say you you won't see your little sister and they go, oh, that's all right. So a family report writer is going to know if you sat there and said, Ask for this. Tell them yeah. you want. This. Make sure you tell them you want. Or they're going to know if your ex did it. So yeah. look, I do think if people worry, they go, "Well, look, my ex is really sneaky and yeah. manipulative, and they always charm people when they first meet mm-hmm. them." And 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 that is a worry. And I do know some people who've been caught up with that. But these guys, the fam- if you get a good family report writer, they have the ability to ask questions of the children that where the children don't even think they're doing their parent a disservice, mm. Mm. but just by being innocent, they're yes, re- revealing true. the truth. So right. I guess it's frustrating to if this trash talk is going on or adult matter talks going on and you can't do anything about it, but feel good with the thought that in the future that it's going to come out right. and, yep. and, and get the kids a psychologist. I think that's If right. you can afford if, it. And yes, and as long as there's not a court order against it and yes. it forgot shared parental responsibility, maybe make the suggestion. Yeah, or but, even the school counsellor. Yeah. So they can talk to another adult. Yes, who's because, not in, in yes. the fight. When you've got two adults saying two different things, mm. it's really hard. So and, you need a, a reality check from a different person. Yeah, and it's the two people they love most in this world. So every child, almost every child, their first wish is and and is that the parents get back together again? Mm. One of the questions the report writers often ask the children is, if you had three wishes, mm. what would they be? Right. Yeah. And so and chocolate, that, chocolate, and chocolate. No, <laughs> mummy and daddy back together again. Oh, or yeah. Be fair, or yeah. Daddy stops crying, or yeah. Well, like, that and that gives it away. It does, does because you shouldn't be crying in front of your cry kids. in the shower, guys. Because um, the family it, report writer looks bad on that. Well. You can't regulate your own emotions. Therefore, you're not providing emotionally for the child because the kids need support and your needs really are secondary. Now, I've seen a lot of arguments, Uh a lot of arguments that say my child is old enough or yes. I want to know they. W- I want them to know me, warts and all. We're going through this together. They're old um, enough to know the truth. They're old enough. It affects them. They're so mature we're getting, yeah. and they can handle it. So that's not that's not a reason to do it. No, no, it's not. It's and not a good not thing. Mature. No, because even as a grown woman, a separation between your parents can be traumatic. Yeah, and and no. look, my psychologist said even as a grown woman myself that that you know my father. Yes. He's the adult in the relationship. Still. So, you know, if he wants to start telling stuff or, you know, if you, if even as an adult, you're still the child in the relationship right. with your parents. So if you, even if you think your child is mature enough, you know, maybe yeah. they're 13, 14, 15, whatever, they're not emotionally no. designed to look after your That's right. love life. <laughs> and does that mean, Laura, when I tell you to do something, you have to listen because you're still my child in this I suppose so, Mum. <laughs> I did give you the best mum ever, Mum. You did. I love it because your kids <laughs> dob on you. I know. <laughs> to me. I know. It's yeah. so not fair. Okay, so look, as hard as this, mm. this, and I know that if you're listening to this, you are probably sick and tired of hearing this BS coming out of your kids' mouths. And worrying about their mental health. Yes, but know that no matter how much trash talk someone does about you, your kids are going to love you anyway. Because and the, and the reason I know this is because the kids that get abused, they still love their parents. Yeah. So, so no amount of trash talk is going to make them hate you. But when they're adults and they look back on their childhood, mm-hmm. you don't want them looking back and remembering you talking badly about their parent, even if you're just defending yourself. Yeah. They'll just remember how they felt. Yeah. And at your place, they weren't felt made yucky. to feel uncomfortable yeah. if, if you don't talk like that. But if the house where someone's, you know, 
slagging off. Mm. Is that an expression still? I'm not sure. The ex, but um, they, their other parent then, and they feel disloyal. Mm. It makes them feel bad about themselves. They're going to remember that feeling yeah. as adults. They just want peace, like you'd want peace. You yeah. would love your ex to go away and stop trash talking you to uh, to yourself. So imagine someone kept coming up to you every day telling you something horrible mm. that you were like, I just need a break. So if you've got kids, and especially as they get to teenagers, they're just going to one day just go, I just want a break. Yes. So provide that place of peace, allow them the space to just be a child and know that even though when they go over to there at the moment, it might be hard. But if you are going to go to court and you go through a family report or child impact, that stuff should come out. Make sure you mention it. Yeah. And then there will be some sort of adjustments for that. Yeah, there usually will be. Yeah. Or criticism yeah. um, of that parent. And like I said, it's a scale mm-hmm. and the court looks at competing scenarios. But it may be that the children are spending more time in a household where they're made to feel uncomfortable mm. about themselves and, and have to listen to this stuff. They might get much less time well, do you think or gonna, supervised. Do you think it's going to have a bit more weight now that the presumption of 50-50 is being taken out? Yes, it shouldn't have Yeah, because it was a rebuttable presumption Yeah, and it's the old law, which is still current till the 6th of May, says that the court has to look at keeping the children physically, so psychologically and emotionally free of harm mm. and trash talking is psychological abuse mm. or emotional abuse. It shouldn't make any difference because of the law is changing, but I believe it will. It will take an emphasis off the 50-50 and then they will have a whole checklist of things that they look at mm. to weigh up and overall work out what's best for the kids. So, so it's it, hard to get through. It's hard to not respond. It is. Uh, but you need to try and be strong. And see a psychologist yourself maybe mm. and, and get them to give you some tips on how to manage because each trash talking situation will be different. But if you can come up with some canned responses with your psychologist and just use them over and over again so that the kids know it's a safe place, they can say what happened and then that you're not going to carry on and they're going to have a a break. Do you know another way that you could accidentally be harming the children? Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm sorry. It me. It's, it's, yeah, it's when a child comes back and says something bad happened at mum's and you suddenly become very interested. Oh, really? Mm. Um, Oh, you know, and then the child sees that you've got your eyes have won, you've leaned in, you're interested, so I'll tell you something else so that happened at mum and to something tell else you. that happened to mum. And yeah. they may exaggerate because they know very well you're not talking mm. and they do it to get attention. One day they say something and you go, right, that's it, I've got to write a letter. And then the relationship between the parents just falls down. So there's a, there's a balance between being even non-verbally encouraging, mm. reporting from the other household, mm. um, between that and and being so switched off to it that you miss important things. Mm. So there's there's a balance there. So Jeez, you guys. Switch. And then on top of that, you've got to finally know your divorce oh, paperwork. So sign your affidavits, go into a court. So there's a lot. We get it. We there's get it. a lot on your plate. Yeah. And but this I, is, yeah. But I know that this is like, it's, it's, it's weird that this is such a big issue that so many people write in about and so many people talk about in our groups. It's not really dealt with <laughs> in any capacity apart from going to a pop course and a dim view. So, you know, I think maybe hopefully in the future the courts can come up with some better systems or, you know, something better than what's going on. Or maybe a society could just get better and we could just be better parents. But in the end, you're their parent. Yeah. And you can protect them as much as you can. I agree. And and on an encouraging note, because I've been doing this since 1980, well, I don't know. 1980, well. Six or yeah, more. Yeah. I've seen a big change in okay. the way parents think about each other and how the children are more front and centre now of people's thoughts than they used to be. That's good. Yeah. So that, I mean, I used to think we ought to have a photo of the children at every mediation on the table mm. so that we all remembered the mediator, the lawyers, the clients, the lot remembered what why we were there. Yeah. And and but I think I see better interest from the courts about the children's interests. I see right. 
I see we never had child consultants like we have now, family, uh, children experts. Mm. We didn't have enough studies to understand the impact on the kids of some of these behaviours. Now we are. We're hearing from them as adults. Mm. So those kids that you watch the videos about who are now adults, their experience, I think, hopefully will would have been not reflective of what goes on today. I think today kids are having a better experience because we are all more educated. So all the best Guys, I know you wanted to end this on a positive note, <laughs> but I don't know if anyone's follows one mum's battle, but in America, oh. it scares me. And I don't know if we're going forwards because they do those reunification camps ah. where they take the children, put them in these mm. camps and brainwash them until they want to go back to the other parent. Well, I will still be positive. Yes. Because they are behind us. Okay. There is, the court taking away the presumption of equal shared parental responsibility is has taken away that idea that the kids must spend time with both parents. Okay. It's so we're in ahead Australia, of the we are. It's only if it's in the best interests of the children. Okay. Well, I feel bad. And I don't me. think we'll ever get there. That we'll never get to that. that that's I crazy. And not. the thing with America is that poor one mum's battle, I know, but they're all of the states. There's what, 52 states? It's all different. They each have their own family law systems. Yeah. So I know, for instance, that parenting coordinators were abolished in one state, but they're still active in another. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a tough rodeo. It out is. There. It is. And but I don't Australia? profess to know about the US, but in Australia, we're on the right track. Okay. I think we are on the right track. Phew. So we did end on a positive note. Yes, we did. Okay. And we if, did. And, oh, and my darling. Be kind to yourselves, so okay, because, like, the it's hard to hear bad things about you or made up things about you coming out of the little human that you love more than anything in the world. So I know, mm. like, all you want to do is just hug your kids and have your life happily ever after with, without them saying, Daddy said this, Mummy said this. So we know it's hard and um, we're thinking of you and we hope this gives you some solace. Mum was, I said, Mum, let's do a trash talking episode. She's like, oh, I don't, I, I don't have a magic wand for this one. No. But maybe you've got something out of this episode that you hadn't thought of that may help. Mm-hmm. And again, psychologists, go and see a psychologist. It's funny, isn't it? I still get upset at the fact that you guys thought I didn't make ice cream. <laughs> yeah. And that was like 40 years ago. Million years ago. <laughs> uh, however, but you're not upset about that. And that's because I didn't react. Yeah. Because you'd forgotten all about it. Yeah. So I, it's better that our listeners, you that's you can carry point. that. That's a good but point. But you don't have to give it to the kids. Yeah. And maybe I should go to counselling about that. Oh, I don't even remember the, I remember the eating the ice cream, but I don't remember saying it to you. So then yes. that, there you go. Yes. So you saved me. By not saying something. That's right. And I probably, and lots of our lovely listeners do, thousands of times over the course of, mm. of the, the And time. you know what, Mum, of all the trash talk that we got, and I did get a lot, I grew up and I know you were amazing. No. So <laughs> it didn't matter what they said in the end because I was like, that doesn't fit with my reality. Why? That's so weird. And then, yeah, through you being you and you looking after us and doing everything you did, of course, in the end, your actions mm. speak louder than anybody's words. And and I think everyone, if you want to hold that to your heart, know that that's going to be the outcome of their trash talking, which yes. is if you're not that and you're doing everything in your power to look after them, the kids grow up to know that. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And but that's not the aim of it. No. The aim of it is just for the children to grow up to be their amazing, yeah, best shiny selves, which yeah. you are. Oh, I love are. you, Ma. <laughs> we might have cut that okay. out. Okay, <laughs> mutual admiration. All right, take care, everyone. Yes, good luck. Our thoughts are with you. Bye, guys. If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review, and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.